independent. The most learned. The most inspirational. The one and only. Obini. 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 Ngobi. Musingusi. His Excellency Robert Chalchak Chagulani Sentamu Hadi Swaibu. People power, our power, and you be, and everywhere. Thank you very much, comrades. Please resume your seats, Madam Deputy. I appreciate the kind words with which you have introduced me. I'm not sure that most learned is supposed to be one of them. But who am I to say no to a doctor attending Mulamuzi? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, comrades, before I say anything, I want to request all of us to stand and observe a moment of silence for our fallen comrade, Comrade James Wasoti also known as Kabogo. May his gentle soul rest in eternal peace. May the angels receive him in glory. May God forgive him all his wrongs. May his memory and his gentleness never go out of our minds. When the struggle, when the struggle is over, we shall wear the bitter crown. We shall wear the bitter crown. We shall wear the bitter crown. When the struggle is over, we shall wear the bitter crown in the new. Please take your seats, ladies and gentlemen. Just to say a word or two about Kabogo. Kabogo was a gentleman. Kabogo was a disciplined guy. Kabogo was a patriot. Kabogo recruited himself. When we start, when I set out to join politics and run for MP in Chadondo, it's on the first day of nomination that I looked behind. Yes, I knew Eddie Mutu and I expected him to be there because he was firebase. But I saw a dark, tall, serious guy. And I saw him all day. And in the evening, I asked who he was. He introduced himself. And he said he was there, not to support me, but to support the idea. He did not stop. He followed through. We all admired his character, his discipline. And when he started the national, the people power movement, he was the first person to come and deploy himself on the gate. He was a gate man before there was even a gate here. That's Kabogo. Every one of us can attest to his discipline, his decency, his respect for values. So we shall miss you, our brother, but be sure that we shall never stop until what you wanted to see in your country is happening. Ladies and gentlemen, this place where we are used to be a hangout for ghetto youth. Every evening, coming by, burning the spliff, dancing and all that. We used to call it the barracks for fire-based soldiers and ghetto youths. And when we started the, the people power movement, we transformed it into our first base, our headquarters. When, thanks to all of you leaders and our leadership, when we got our new headquarters in Kavule, for new leaders. And that's the idea that was, we have followed through up to today.
we are glad the leadership. It was not a mistake. We were inspired by the great revolutionaries that came before us. She Guevara said that the first duty of a revolutionary is to be educated. Thomas Sankara, who we idolize, said the enemies of the people are those who keep them in ignorance. Steve Biko, who was killed in prison, said the most powerful weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. Malcolm X went ahead to teach us that education is the passport to the future because tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Now those are not just slogans and we chose, we chose not to keep those as mere quotes but to make them alive in our time. And I cannot be prouder to have this day, ladies and gentlemen. Friends, it is with great honor that I stand before you today as we witness the opening of our school of leadership. Now, this is not just a school, it is a testament of hope, a place where our present and future leaders will be prepared, shaped, and refined. We want to equip our leaders with the knowledge and skills that would help them through the struggle for change and also to empower them and enable them with the skills to transform Uganda into the country that we all desire after the fall of the dictator. We want to improve their understanding of our mission so that they can pass it on wherever they go, whoever they reach, with clarity and eloquence. As a national entity platform, we recognize the need of a new breed of leaders who are not only politically cautious, but morally upright. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our leadership school has opened its doors at a very critical moment in our history. You all know that political education used to be taught in our schools for so many years. It used to help our young learners to understand and appreciate Uganda's political history and the dynamics that have shaped our country into the country that we call home today. But yes, we all know that the regime recently scrapped off political education from the national curriculum. So opening this school is our humble contribution towards the bridging of the gap and to ensure that the citizens get the opportunity to learn, to lead, and to contribute to the political process of their country. <laughs> Friends, on our way to a new Uganda, we must be guided by principles of integrity, transparent, transparency, and servant leadership. It is our hope and prayer that the leaders from this school will be true representations and true ambassadors of those values that we hold so dear. We need leaders who will resist temptations of power, temptations like corruption and self-entitlement. Therefore, the students at this school shall be taught to fight corruption, to fight the abyss of office, to fight all malpractices that have characterized the politics of our country by subjecting them to training in communication, in strategy and policy formulation, we will empower them to realize their real and true potential. We will teach them to articulate the vision and aspiration of the national unity platform and bring about the change that our country is desperately desiring. We must overcome the attempts to block the awareness of our people, to keep our people in the dark and to keep them from massively participating in the politics of their country. We have a duty to ensure that every Ugandan is equipped with the knowledge and skills that they need to participate in the politics of their country. The regime, as we all know, has deliberately kept all our people in the dark and ignorant about About their constitutional rights and their civic duties. For example, the law commands that the constitution of Uganda is translated in all local languages of Uganda. But how many of you have ever seen a constitution of Uganda in their local language? The regime refused to do that. So it is my sincere hope 
that this school will not only be focused on regime change, but also building the ideas of a country where leaders will be servants and not bosses. So, whether you are a current or incoming leader of this party, or a citizen with a passion of leadership, the school is going to be open for you. And we are going to be available to share what we know with you. Together, we will rise to the occasion to build a Uganda that is not only united, that is not only powerful, that is not only patriotic, but also awakened. It is my hope and prayer, friends, that whoever goes through this school will be able to confidently stand up in any crowd and be an ambassador and representation of what we believe in as a national unity platform in their local language. I hope that this idea that we're launching today will go beyond Kamocha and will go beyond Kampala. I hope it will be embraced and spread all over the country so that even when the regime tries to shut us up or block us or raid us like they usually do, it will be beyond their reach. It will already have spread across the country, everywhere, far and wide. I hope that we shall embrace it. I hope that whatever you learn here, you teach your friends so that together we can practice what we always say, each one teach one, each one teach one, and our values will be able to go to the last man. Thank you very much, and I thank the Almighty God for making this day.